So I'm at lunch yesterday with a car guy friend of mine, and he's got some cool cars. And sadly, among those cool cars, which include, I think, an Aston Martin, a Grand Sport Corvette, S-Class convertible, cool stuff, he has a Chrysler Pacifica. And this, this is his favorite car. Well, of course, he and I debate about this, and this is like the fourth time we've done this. And he, of course, tells me, spoken like a true guy that does not have kids. Well, here we are. Let's prove how practical a non-minivan can be. Shall we? we talked about in the tech review of the original soft top roadster 155 horsepower 148 pounds of torque doesn't sound like a lot does it but 2400 pounds even with the rf it's more than enough around town as a matter of fact it puts to shame some larger more powerful cars that you and i drive around town and i know i am i am broken i am weird about this kind of stuff i am not the usual person but around town, you don't have that overall, that like overwhelming feeling of, oh my God, I need to make the suspension stiffer. It's, you get the balanced goodness around town, but not the need of like, ah, uh, yeah, I think I need to bump my intestines out because that's just who I am. It's more than enough around town. The, the setup from the factory of Mr. Coleman has blessed me. While we're on the subject of being prudent, I do need to point out as we cross over into Santa Monica here, uh, the fuel economy that I am doing, notice I am not driving this gingerly. This is the way I've been driving the thing all week. And I've been averaging, averaging 25 or above MPG around town. Now, before you and I get too far down the road here, we need to understand something really important about this specific Mazda because it ain't no ordinary garden variety MX-5 RF. It's a club sport, which means a couple of things. Bilstein dampers and sport suspension. Now this one here, this very one you're looking at, is fitted with the Brembo and BBS package. And if I have to explain that to you, you're probably watching the wrong show. So with all that, I fully expected this thing to drive magnificently as I have gushed previously in this episode, as well as other episodes. But what I didn't expect was the attention this thing garnered. Everywhere I went, people came out of the woodworks, car people, non-car people. But the best story, that's my friend Kirk. You see that Porsche behind him? It ain't a 911, it's a 912. And he is the original owner, meaning in 1970, he rolled into a Porsche dealership, wrote a check for it, rolled out with it, and has daily driven that thing ever since. Well, this past Sunday, I show him this thing, and he has a little game he plays with me. How much is that car? And I have a game I play back with him. I never give him an answer. I ask him, what do you think? And it's kind of like my way of market research. He says $70,000. When I tell him it's half that, he looked at me as if Dr. Porsche himself has come back to life and is now giving away free GT3s, but only to original 912 owners. Okay, enough with being prudent. Let's get back to having some fun. And this time on our home turf. Last time we drove this thing was in San Diego. Now we're in Moto Canyon with some nice declining radiance. Oh, oh. <laughs> do you see why I love this car, people? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, being back on home turf, knowing the roads where I can push it however I want, uh, this is where I retract what I said. Well, not really retract what I said earlier. In town, the setup is just perfect the way 
Mr. Coleman has helped us. However, for this, if I owned this, I'd absolutely take this thing to Grand Junction, Colorado, and let Brandon, the magician at Flying Miata, and all the other guys there. But at the end of the day, it's really the suspension that I'd want changed, and it's all in the back. So let's try this thing coming around this turn. Put our foot into it in third gear. Plenty of power, like in the middle of the rev band. So not really an issue there. But if I push it a little too hard around here, it's not lean. It's just, it's that wee bit of squat. It's ever so slight. And the thing is, it's not really that much different than the Roadster because the weight, it's, it's a negligible difference. And now for something completely different that falls under the heading of advice that you would get from your mentor, your parents, or your significant other. There is nothing perfect in this life, and this is no exception. Here's my partial list. We already talked about the suspension, but that only applies to freaks like me. You can't have leather in a club sport. You can't have heated seats in a club sport. You can't have uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in any of them. And then uh, if you want to adjust the volume with this knob down here, uh, you basically have to be built like a pterodactyl. Uh, how about making the roof glass? That'd actually be pretty cool. I know it would add probably 20 pounds, and Coleman would throw up all over that idea, but I kind of like the idea of a glass roof. No, wait a minute. I got a better idea. Make the roof acrylic so it's light, but still see-through, and then have like a stick-on sunshade. So it probably wouldn't add any weight at all. As a matter of fact, it would take off some weight. How do you like them apples? Now, while we're on the topic of complaints, lovely color, isn't it? It's called ceramic metallic. Now, if you told me, say, 10 years ago, that A, there would be a color on offer called ceramic, and B, myself and everyone who has seen it would fall in love with it, I would tell you, you most likely have been driving too many French cars. However, uh, this, while wonderful, there are rich man's problems. Let me point them out to you. So uh, to keep this looking ceramic, you need to travel at all times with one of these because your ceramic doesn't stay ceramic because there is so much dust, almost like a black car. You see the dust come up almost you know what? You remember the old like Mercedes 300 diesels? Remember the 300 TD? Uh, I grew up around one. Uh, the back end of that car, the ass end of that, you could clean it and five minutes later there would be soot everywhere. This kind of the same thing. So I would suggest you need your California duster, no relation to the state, to keep this looking tip top. Because after all, you are going to get a ridiculous amount of attention. And in the ultimate test, of being prudent and domestic for the first time ever in eight years and 750 episodes a 65 pound fuzzball in a two-seat open roof 2400 pound sports car uh, with that kumo wanted to come out for the ride he is not pleased that he's over there uh, we'll have to let him drive a little bit later so he wanted to point out a couple of things. Uh, number one, he doesn't like the idea of a black interior. You could tell for obvious reasons, because it's going to take us the better part of two hours to get the white hair off that seat and mine, because he was sitting here while we were rigging up the cameras. And then uh, two, this is so, I know, I mean, I'm trying to tell them. Uh, you know, we talk about in the Porsche episodes, how they have like the, 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 the front 20%, I'm trying to tell them, the front 20% of the car has like that film on it, that invisible film. Uh, well, here, it's not the front 20%. It's the hood, the fenders, and even the front of the mirror fairings. Hit the apex. Dog in the apex. Look at him, man. You are on top of it. I know. Look at how cool he is. He's got his butt, like, scrunched into the back of the seat. Yeah! <laughs> it doesn't phase you at all, does it? He's having more fun in this car than my girlfriend does. Jesus! She complains about this thing because there's no room for her stinking yoga water bottle. I know, it's fun. We'll leave her at home, huh? Actually, there's nowhere for her if you're in the car. So what exactly did you and I prove today, besides going shopping together for the first time in over eight seasons and 750 episodes? And for the life of me, I couldn't come up with a good answer until I started staring at this, and then it dawned on me. This and what's in the garage are related because they both they start from basic goodness. Like eight months ago, we drove that thing for the first time, and I gushed because it starts from the basic goodness of balance. This starts from the basic goodness of pumpkins. And then I refer to them as drug dealers over at Costco. They turn this into some magical concoction that you get for only three months a year. 
sadly, or really probably not so sadly when you consider this. But that, we proved today we can use that 12 months a year, even in cold weather climates. So Ed, you can tell your minivan to go shove it. Now granted, if people have kids, you probably would need another car more realistic. You don't need a minivan, but another car more realistic. At the end of the day, that is practical. And on that note, you need to beat it because I need to eat this before Kumo finds out what's going on here because although we know he shouldn't be eating this, he doesn't seem to agree. So um, until I see you next time, bis später. Oh my God. Oh. I gotta do more of this on the show. I really do. I really gotta do more of this on the show.